Hi, it's Titus Murray here from Southern Highland Structural Geology. I'm out for my run, um, having a look at some ironbark trees. These trees are amazing. They are one of the few eucalypts that don't lose their bark. Instead, it sort of forms a fireproof covering. Um, you can see how this furry bark here means that they're fireproof. They will burn, but then they'll often sprout at the base and um, become coppice. Then you'll see this is actually one tree that effectively has two trunks going up to the top there. Anyway, we're going to have a look at the uh, analysis we did on the ironbark prospect before it was drilled, based on the data that was put out by Q. This is his work we did back in August um, as a prediction, and we tucked away to see what would happen after the well was, was drilled. This is obviously post the well, so we know what's happened. And it's important to recognise that we didn't do this for anyone. This was a demonstration project, and it's all based on a Q Energy investor pack. It's all about using a set of tools. This is my mate Nick's tool. He's still chainsaw and a nice bit of iron bark there. For us, it's the fault risk tool described in the paper we put together in 2019. It's using fault risks, the hanging wall for all trade. Got the displacement profile for the east fault, nice theoretical displacement profile, and that's consistent throw, good quality work. The western fault is compound structure. So what we've done is we've split them into two genetic elements. If you want to do a good fault seal analysis, stratigraphy is key. Taking up the stratigraphy as presented by Q. This upper section is the critical element. It's actually penetrated by the Brigadier well on the same fault block, and this is the shallow Mungaroo. These were the sands that they were looking for, and I'm not sure what the basis of that was. Put together rough stratigraphy. We have described these with uncertainty, but the problem we've got is these large displacement faults cause the TR30 to juxtapose the main reservoir section. Assuming uh, that we have no membrane seal, we have moderate to low probabilities of getting very small columns. And this is why. The, here's the Allen maps. Um, this is the P10 Allen map. And what it is, is this TR30 unit dropping down over the main reservoir section. So that's the P10 case. That's the P50 case. And you see everything changes a bit. And that's the P90. These are three of 10,000 realizations for the Eastern Fault. If we did use SGR, then we'd have a much higher chance of getting a significant column. So in summary, the model was driven by displacement and the pre-drill stratigraphy. We predicted a dry well, it would be a very small column, um, and the failure would be due to lack of lateral seal. You know, without an hour map, you know, what would you predict? The folks at Q are absolutely to be commended for putting the data out. I'd hate to think that by putting a video like this together, people didn't put data out. Uh, serendipity could have played into a whole range of things, and, and Q and the joint venture partners would be commended for drilling the well. And let's hope that in the future, we get to see more of these data.